Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to another how to play video. Today we are taking a look at Cyber Dragon. We're going to teach you how to play the deck from the very basics and at least give you some idea of how to play. The aim here isn't that you'll walk away an expert, you'll just have a good idea on how the basics function. I do want to say thank you very much for coming along. If you haven't seen any of my content before, now is a good time to hit subscribe before you realise it's absolute fucking garbage. If you've been here before, there must be something wrong with you in the fact that you've come back to the channel again. But thank you either way for being here. We're going to stop waffling on though, we're going to get stuck right into the video for you now. The Cyber Dragon archetype debuted into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG back in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX era and was piloted by the seemingly permanently pissed off Zane Truesdale in the GX series. The Cyber Dragon archetype is named after, well, Cyber Dragon itself. Much as we see with the likes of Blue Eyes, which, coincidentally, Cyber Dragon is more or less considered to be some sort of spiritual successor of. They even went as far as to make the main character associated with the deck just as bloody miserable as the commonly associated one with Blue Eyes 2. Come to think of it, the whole concept actually isn't really all that creative. Cyber Dragon Dot Deck is a smaller part of the much bigger overall cyber archetype, which includes the likes of Cyber Dark and all those other useless cards that they just slap the word cyber in front of. With this in mind, it's no hard and fast rule as to which falls into which category, so we'll just go with the flow and talk about whatever feels useful enough to be worth mentioning, or at least was so bad that we need to warn you away. The cyber archetype itself expands far beyond just the name of the main wiggly boy that we've all come to know and love as its namesake, garnering tons of support over the years. Some is amazing and some, frankly, downright terrible. I'm looking at you, Cyber Barrier Dragon. The more recent support since the Link era has been really solid, in fact, but much of the support that came before, as well as generic machine support, has been very kind to the deck as a whole. It's even had a structure deck as support, as well as something similar expected with the new OCG release due sometime in the future, known as Cyber Style. And although it remains to be seen as to how good this will be, recent structure decks that support existing archetypes have largely done quite well. See the likes of the Chanel structure deck as a good example of this. As a quick note on the history of Cyber Dragon itself, its release marked a huge amount of power creep in the game and brought about the end of the now famous and loved GOAT format, and started the kind of Yu-Gi-Oh game we know and love now, a much more fast paced and combo heavy, at least relatively speaking, type of game. The deck on the whole has seen a mixed bag of results largely seeing success with singular cards from the archetype being used in other decks rather than the archetype as a whole. Having said that, in recent years the deck has seen plenty of national and regional level success as well as a handful of YCS tops too and remains a firm fan favourite amongst many players, particularly as a going second blowout strategy. So how is the Cyber Dragon archetype played? Cyber Dragon largely aims to go second and pummel through the opponent like a big metallic bat dragon toy. If you know, you know. Leaving the opponent shaking at the knees. But in more recent years, it's been a bit more consistent with being able to play going first. Still not perfectly, but well enough that being forced to go first no longer is essentially an auto loss. Mostly this consistency has been provided by newer support released for the deck. Having said all of this, going second and obliterating the opponent is what it does well. The Cyber Dragon cards and direct monster support are a series of light attribute machine type monsters, and the fusion centric expansion to this is the Chimera Tech monsters, which are all dark machines. The Chimera Tech monsters use materials that include, at least usually, Cyber Dragon and or a number of other monsters. Usually the main strategy when playing is to swarm the field and power up into much bigger and far more aggressive Cyber Dragon fusions, although this has expanded to X Seed options and most recently even a Link Monster for the archetype. The deck also, generally speaking, will take advantage of broken existing support for generic machine stuff too, cards like Machine Duplication and, for example, Limiter Removal seeing a variety of play over the years. When forced to go first, the deck will usually tend to push for boards that end on Cyber Dragon Infinity, Cybernetic Overflow, and whatever else they can put out to keep them alive until turn 3 when they can try to mount an offensive. Like all decks, the archetype does have its own weaknesses, cards such as System Down, which is a complete blowout for the most part when used against the deck, and oddly enough their own extra deck monsters can be used against them if the opponent happens to be running them. 
Cards like Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon being able to eat up the pilot's resources and being absorbed into the opponent's monster. Usually the opponent will try to force this deck to go first wherever possible, and whilst it's been mentioned previously, the deck is heavily weighed to go second, often meaning that go first boards can be underwhelming and are easy to pick apart by a competent duelist. Next we're going to do a rundown of the primary Cyber Cyber Dragon cards, what they do, and then later on we'll take a look at what other common cards see play in the deck as a whole. As a couple of quick notes before we get started, I'll be covering cards that are actually useful at the time of making this video. There's no point covering cards that you shouldn't be playing and overloading with pointless information. We'll stick to what matters. On that note of information I'm relaying to you, I'll be reading the card effects on a somewhat shortened basis in order to keep the length of the video down a little. I'll offset this as always by trying to show the card on screen, although we know Yu-Gi-Oh players aren't actually likely to read a fucking thing. We will, however, look at some of the options you should consider now. So we start off with Cyber Dragon Herds. Its name becomes Cyber Dragon whilst it's on the field or in the graveyard, something a bit of a running theme that you'll see later on. You can use one of the following effects of this card's name once per turn, and it's a hard once per turn. If it's special summoned, you can make it into a level 5 until the end of the turn. Also, you can only special summon machines for the rest of the turn. If it's sent to the graveyard, you can add another Cyber Dragon from your deck to your hand. Next up is Cyber Dragon Naxter. Its name also becomes Cyber Dragon whilst it's on the field or in the graveyard. You can discard another monster to special summon this card from your hand. If it's summoned, you can target a machine with 2100 attack or defense and special summon it, but you can't special summon except for machines for the rest of the turn. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Following on from that, we have Cyber Dragon Core, which again, like the others, is treated as Cyber Dragon whilst it's on the field or in the graveyard. When it's normal summoned, you can add a Cyber Spell or Trap from the deck to the hand. If only your opponent controls a monster, you can banish it from the graveyard to special summon a Cyber Dragon monster from your deck. You can only use one effect per turn, and only once that turn. Cyber Dragon Dry. Its name also becomes Cyber Dragon whilst it's on the field or in the graveyard. When it's normal summon, you can make all Cyber Dragons you control become level 5. You can't special summon during the turn you activate this effect, except for machines. If it's banished, you can target a Cyber Dragon you control. It can't be destroyed this turn. Cyber Dragon Veer. Its name becomes Cyber Dragon whilst it's on the field or in the graveyard. If you summon a Cyber Dragon except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand in defense position. This effect is a hard once per turn. It also has the effect that boosts all Cyber Dragons you control by 500 attack and defense. And lastly, we move on to Cyber Dragon itself. If only your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon it from your hand. The numbers of each of these vary from build to build, although three copies of Cyber Dragon, Core, and Hers is pretty standard for the most part. Many builds will run two to three copies of Naxter. Veer is commonly played at 1, and Dry almost really doesn't see much play in the modern game. For the next part, we're taking a look at the extra deck options, including the Cyber Dragon and Chimera Tech monsters. We'll start off with the Link 2 monster Cyber Dragon Seeger. It requires two machine monsters, including Cyber Dragon. Its name becomes Cyber Dragon whilst it's on the field or in the graveyard. During each battle phase, if it's not declared an attack, you can, quick effect, Target a machine you control with 2100 or more attack, and for the rest of the turn it gains 2100 attack and defense. Also, neither player takes damage from attacks involving this monster. That's not the monster that's boosted, this monster itself. The effect is a hard once per turn. Following on from that, we have Cyber Dragon Nova. Once per turn, you can ditch a material to special summon a Cyber Dragon from your graveyard. Once per turn, quick effect, you can banish a Cyber Dragon from your hand or face up from your monster zone and then it gains 2100 attack until the end of the turn. If this card in your possession is sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon one fusion machine monster from your extra deck. We also have Cyber Dragon Infinity, which requires three level 6 light machine monsters. But I'll let you in on a little secret, nobody ever summons it that way. Once per turn, you can also exceed summon infinity by using Nova you control as a material, and then all of those materials transfer over to this card too. This card gains 200 attack for each material attached. Once per turn, you can attach a face-up attack position monster on the field to this card as material. 
Once per turn, when a card or effect is activated, quick effect, you can detach a material to negate the activation and destroy it. Following on from that, we have Chimeratech Over Dragon. It requires Cyber Dragon plus one plus machine monsters. It must be fusion summoned. If it's fusion summoned, you send all other cards you control to the graveyard. The original attack and defense become 800 times the number of materials used to summon it. Each turn, it can attack opponent's monsters up to a number of times equal to the number of materials used to summon it. After that, we have Chimeritech Mega Fleet Dragon. Chimeritech Mega Fleet Dragon. It requires a Cyber Dragon monster plus one plus monsters from the extra monster zone. It can't be used as fusion material. It must first be special summoned from your extra deck by sending the above materials from either field to the graveyard. No poly needed up in here. The original attack becomes 1200 times the number of materials used for its summon. After that we have Chimeratech Rampage Dragon. It requires 2 plus Cyber Dragon monsters. A fusion summon of this card can only be done with the above materials. When it's fusion summoned you can target spells or traps on the field up to the number of materials used and destroy them. Once per turn you can send up to two light machine monsters from the deck to the graveyard and if you do for each monster sent to the graveyard this card gains an additional attack during each battle phase of this turn. And lastly we have Chimeratech Fortress Dragon. It requires Cyber Dragon and 1 plus machine monsters. It can't be used as fusion material. It must first be special summoned from the extra deck by sending cards from either side of the field to the graveyard and again no poly here either. The attack becomes 1000 times the number of materials used for its summon. Most of these see some degree of play, although Chimeratech monsters largely see play depending on the format rather than being used consistently. I would also like to give an honourable shout out to the Cyber Twin and Cyber End Dragon. They're not something that overly sees much play anymore, but classic options people still love to sometimes make use of. For this next part of the video, we're going to take a look at the Cyber Dragon spells and traps. So we'll start off with Cyber Emergency. You can have one light machine monster that can't be normal summoned or set, or one cyber dragon monster from the deck to the hand. If this card in its owner's possession is negated by an opponent's card effect, you can discard a card to add it back to the hand. You can only activate one copy of emergency per turn. After that we have cyber load fusion. You can fusion summon a monster from the extra deck that lists cyber dragon as material by shuffling materials into the deck from your field and or banish cards, but only that fusion monster can attack for the rest of the turn. You can only activate one copy of Cyber Load Fusion per turn. And then we have Cyber Repair Plant. If Cyber Dragon is in your graveyard, you can activate one of these effects. However, if you have three or more Cyber Dragons in your graveyard, you can activate both and resolve them in sequence. You can only activate this card once per turn. The first effect is that you can add a Light Machine from the deck to the hand. The second effect is that you can shuffle a Light Machine from the graveyard into the deck. There's also Cyber Rev System. You can special summon a Cyber Dragon from the hand or graveyard, and it can't be destroyed by card effects. And lastly we have Cybernetic Overflow. You can banish Cyber Dragons with different levels from the hand, field, or the graveyard, then destroy an equal number of cards your opponent controls. If this set card on the field is destroyed by a card effect, you can add a Cyber Spell or Trap from the deck to the hand. Each effect is a hard once per turn. The numbers of each of these played again varies from build to build, but Emergency is largely considered a 3 of. For this part of the video we're going to take a look at some external support, cards that we usually see in the deck or being experimented with that aren't, well, actually Cyber Dragon cards. So we start off with Overload Fusion. Overload Fusion is used to power out huge Chimeratech monsters by using materials that you've already used. It sees less play than it once did, but it comes up quite often as a 1 of. After that we have Machine Duplication. This is arguably one of the best cards in the deck, by no means exclusively used by Cyber Dragons, see Spiral Shenanigans before they got yeeted multiple times on the list, this card allows you to quickly swarm and build up a formidable aggressive strategy. After that we have Jizakuru, the chocolate starfish destroying Kaiju. This card is used to out problematic monsters on the field and is especially useful at the moment for dealing with the likes of Red Eyes Dark Dragoon and you can then just proceed to absolutely beat the shit out of it. And lastly we have Galaxy Soldier. Have you ever just straight up fucking hated a card for absolutely no good reason? Meet Galaxy Soldier. I don't know why I hate it, I just do. But if you're a Cyber Dragon player, this is usually a key part of the strategy to getting into Nova, Infinity, and putting bodies on board for Link Materials, and thinning the deck too. 
For the next part, I'm going to be showing you some sample deck lists that you can build from over time. These won't be perfect and far from well tested. In fact, I likely won't have fucking tested them at all, if I'm going to be honest. But hopefully they'll provide you with some cool ideas for ratios, potential techs, and much, much more. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.